you have questions to ask, can you raise up your hand? You can come forward. First man. Praise the Lord. Uh, once again, I bless the name of the Lord once again and the church, uh, the men of God, the minister and the pastor. So your work so far and the work of our Father and the Lord has helped us so far. I got the track of, uh, uh, from uh, one of your members living with me, so I've gone through it. So I read it and it helped me so far. I've learned a lot in the terms of uh, holiness. And by the grace of God, I'll be impacting it to my family, to the entire church where I worship. So my question goes like this. When it comes to uh, holiness and uh, foreseeing it, while our teacher was teaching in our class, he was talking about enforcing uh, holiness. Now, I want to understand enforcing holiness. When it comes to enforcing holiness, how do we take the place of a uh, prayer? In the practical sense of it, when you are enforcing it, maybe you do everything within yourself physically to enforce holiness. How do we help enforcing holiness in our churches, in the church of God today, in our families? How do we enforce it with them? Or is it necessary? What is the place of a prayer when it comes to enforcing holiness? Is it just practical? We do practical or physical thing to enforce it on our brethren. Praise the Lord. Are you a minister over a church? Praise the Lord, sir. Uh, by Are the you case. a minister? Yes, sir. You want to bring holiness to your church? Yes, I'll be doing so, sir. And uh, I still want to, yes. And you want to know how to do it? Yes, sir, more. Okay. Now, uh, in the book of Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 34. Second Chronicles, 34. Uh, King Josiah actually had the fear of God but not completely I read from verse 1 Josiah was 8 years old when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem 1 and 30 years that's 31 years and he did that which was right in the sight of God and walked in the ways of David his father and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left for in the eighth year of his reign while he was yet young he began to seek after the God of David his father and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the curved images and the molting images. Here, Josiah began to uproot those things, to cut down those dark trees that idol worshippers go under to sacrifice to idols. He cut those things off and all those molten images, curved images that were planted here and there, being the leader, he decreed against them that they should be removed from Jerusalem, from under his reign. Anywhere those things were found, they should be removed. That is what he did. Even with this, he had not known the full word of God until the book of the Lord was discovered. Verse 14. And when they brought out the money, 
that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the, of the Lord given by Moses. And this book was brought before King Josiah. Verse 18. Then Shepham the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had given me a book. And Shepham read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard of the weights of the law, that he rent his clothes. He was convicted. He had been serving God, but he didn't have a full knowledge. He had zeal. He did what he, the little knowledge he had could do until he came at God, maybe, let's say, in a conference like this, or somebody else gave it to him, the book of the law, just as we had here. I'm saying in a conference like this because of you. You came in a conference like this and discovered that so these things are clear abominations. So they should never be found in my life, in my family, in the church. So he cried. Then verse 20, and the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikim, the son of Shephan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shepham, the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the, king's, of the king, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the weights of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. You see, after he had read the word, he said, he started crying, please go to the prophet, prophet Huldah, and find out what the Lord has to tell us. Because from the way I look at it, we have gone very far from the Lord proper discovery you have made the right discovery your church left God for very long time your overseer left Jesus for a very long time I'm telling you so what you are discovering is the correct thing what you are seeing now is the correct thing now they went to Holder and inquired and verse 23 and she answered them thus said the lord god of israel tell ye the man that sends you to me thus said the lord behold i will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of judah because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. What the Lord now is, the Lord answered him, what you read in the book is perfect truth and I am about doing it. I am about bringing judgment upon this land because of the wickedness of these people and of the kings that, ru that ruled this land. I am going to wipe them out. I am going to judge them. I am going to visit the inhabitants of this land. What you, have, you are hearing, the Lord will want you to know is what you are learning here is true. No single person who has used jewelry, marriage ring, wedding ring, earring, or any form of jewelry, necklace, chain, bracelets, beads. Not one has been to heaven since heaven began. Since man started in living in this life. It is more than saying no madman 
with nakedness have ever entered into this church in the day of worship. If I say so, there's more, there might not be 100% truth. Maybe unknown to people, but for heaven, not one. All those bishops with ring and chain, not one will go to heaven. Not one. All those pastors' wives with earring in their ears, not one has ever been there. And not one is going there. Hear this thing we are telling you. All of these things, all those who are perming their hair, all those who are putting attachment, not one has been there. Not one will ever be there. That's the standard of heaven. For they shall not enter in whatsoever defile it. Now, you are coming to hear this for your first time, but the Lord says true. The Lord is saying, tell them they are hearing the truth. They have been in darkness for so long. Let them value the, my mercy, calling them together. Let the one that want to argue, go and argue. Let him that be righteous, be righteous still. Him that be holy, be holy still. Let him that will be unholy, be unholy still. Behold, I come with my judgment. So, this happened. The, go and tell the king that according to the writing of that book, it shall be so. But look at what the Lord said unto the king. Verse 26. And for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou hadest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest thyself before me, and this rain thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even had thee also, said the Lord. That's what God expects. Total brokenness, not argumentative. Total brokenness. Total humility. Even unto this shall the Lord have respect. Them that are of a contrite spirit, and tremble it at my word. As for you, because you have heard this and you are afraid, you knew your name is not in the book of life because you were not following this truth. All your ministry for years was vanity. But now you have cried. Now your, your body is shaking. Now your heart is resolved to do this thing. I have seen it, said the Lord. And he said, Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. I spare you. John said, O brook of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because you changed. But remember, he was, right, he was doing righteousness to the level he knew, but not to the fullness. And the Lord is not born again, it is holiness. As for born again, he was. But ignorance surrounded him. He was not walking in holiness, in the fullness of the knowledge and practice of righteousness. Now, the Lord says, you were inside the whole thing, but now that you have known the truth, my truth, I spare you. Now that you are determined, I see it into your heart, I spare you. I will, you will end well. You will leave the earth in peace. I will cover you with my full righteousness. I will show you mercy. You will die well. 
Now the information was taken to the king. Verse 29. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. They were living without this book. But the commandment had been the law of God, the word of God, the book of the law, should be written and kept, by, kept beside the king of Israel, every king, that he will read from it and rule the people. But backsliding carried those things away. They never taught, they not was not done until the time of Josiah. And the Lord showed Josiah mercy to discover the book. Why? He had begun in his feeble way to do righteousness. But he didn't have enough. He had begun. That is why the Lord gave him. Blessed are they that hunger and test after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are you that are looking for the truth. The Lord shall reveal truth to you. So, this man now gathered all the members of his church. The people under him. And caused this truth to be read for them. Read it to all of them. Go and teach your church this truth. Take down notes. Receive the books. Buy the books there. The trap. The all. Record the messages. Buy them. They are recorded. Buy the messages. Carry it to your church. Cause the members to hear it one by one. Until they hear the whole truth. Now, let's go. And the king, verse 31, and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to work after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the weights of the covenant which are written in this book. Personal decision before all people. Church, hear me. I've been pastoring you for about 10 years now. I didn't know this truth. Go and tell the truth. The truth shall promote you. Many of you are ashamed to tell the truth. That's why all this secret thing you're doing, God will not justify it. Because he said, I am too big to be treated secretly. I am too big. That you will not speak truth to your people. That you didn't know this thing. That God in mercy shot it to you. But you want to say, eh, I knew it. Only I'm waiting for a right time. It's a lie. And lie does not work out the righteousness of God. Go and declare you didn't know it. But that the mercy of God found you. Not only you, them also. To bring out this truth. And that you stand before them and speak before God. That you have decided to teach this truth. To follow this truth. To preach this truth. Anyone who is not willing to be in this church can go his own way. Anyone who does not want to hear this truth should go his own way. Henceforth, listen, in verse 32. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Now, he caused all. You, some few years ago, did you like sitting in the front of the car with a belt tying yourself? Did you like it? But Nigeria put it on you. How did they do it? Road safety. If you don't do it, you're going to pay fine. If you don't do it, you're going to pay fine. 
That's how gradually, gradually, people are putting on seatbelt now. Unwillingly. And then some now come to say, this seatbelt is very important. This seatbelt is very important. They start becoming preachers of seatbelt. You get it now. But it is a decision. What is the decision? Whoever is found in this thing. Well, at first, I can say, I give you time. But you will never be a worker in this church. Because there's defilement in your life. You won't sing song here. We will not ask you to lead prayers. We will not give you preaching here. We will not do that. Anyone who's scared does not go down. Properly can never join the choir. It's a pollution to it. It's a pollution. Anyone who wears trousers, a lady, to the church, stop her at the gate. Send her back home. This, and God said, I saw what Josiah was doing. And I, I spare him. Go and do what God will spare you. Go back to your church. Preach it without bothering whether you have an overseer, a head of you, a, a church founder. Did he die on the cross? Why should he block heaven from people? Go and lose heaven. Go and lose those people to go to heaven if he refuses that you should be a pastor be free to go as you are going a lot of those people shall go with you like Paul the apostle amen, amen. simple we are looking for preachers we are looking for workers we are looking for all if they drive you away from that you have brothers and sisters in holiness revival movement they are welcome oh come here come here because we're looking for true preachers. They have and they're playing with it. Bring it. We look, we're looking for them. A man with persecution. <laughs> with suffering. That's what Jesus said. That you have a hundredfold with. It's not with pleasure. Oh, I'm coming to all of this movement. I will enjoy salary. And <laughs> We will examine you proper. So, that is how to do it. And in verse 33, and Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel and made all and made all and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days, they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. If a man did this, you would do more. He did it under the New Old Testament. You do it under the New Testament. A period of grace. He did it. God helped him. God will help you more. Amen. Amen. Yeah. His own was children of Israel who had knowledge of God. Yours, you are dealing in this Gentile church. The Lord will help you. Even the people know or know, the Lord will back you up and righteousness shall be established. Be that an example. Is that all right? Thank you so much. The second person. How is it that Onicha or Anambra doesn't have women that are oh, they're all in kitchen? Ah. Do you believe what he has said? Leave them in the kitchen. Don't go and trouble them there. God has answered my prayer. <laughs> yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Amen. I'm Reverend Chine Dawuzi from Itubama, Imo State. And I serve under the United Church of Christ, UCC. Amen. And my question is very simple. 
uh, during our discussion, the man of God mentioned anointing and also anointing service. So I want to know whether this anointing service or anointing oil is biblical or not. Then if the answer is yes or no, we should open our Bible to the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 9 and James, James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. The question is all about anointing oil or okay. anointing service. Whether it's recommended in the Bible or not. What, what, do you, what is your own understanding or belief? Okay, I believe in anointing. Yes. And also I believe in anointing service. Okay. May God bless us in Jesus. What name. do you do so? What do you do in your anointing service? Okay. Uh, uh, like where I mentioned in the book of James. What do you do in your anointing service? I conduct service. Yes. Stroke anointing. Uh, for what? <laughs> For what? On Sundays. I mean, you are anointing them for what? For healing uh -huh. and other things. Which, that's false work you are doing now. False work. That is why you should humble and learn because you have invited Satan to your church. Does he have any other scripture to tell him of other things in his church? These other things is adding to healing. Does he have scripture to prove them? No. Number two. Did God say, bring everybody to your church and anoint them? He can't find a scripture that speaks like that. Even the, the disciples of Jesus, what he's, where he's mentioning, used anointing oil for healing only. You hear? They anointed people with oil and prayed for their healing. That is what they did. And in James chapter 5, James chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 15, I mean verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Is it that the elders of the church will call them to the church? Let him call for the elders of the church. Why are you calling them to the church? Where do you have your example from? That you are speaking boldly. Confidently. Let him call for the elders of the church. That is what the word says. And it goes. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of what? The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall do what? Raise him up. He's lying down, bedridden. It's not common use that you're carrying anointing oil somewhere. Everybody come, anointing oil. You're spoiling the, the word of God. This man here is bedridden. That is why he's calling you to come to his house. This man here is lying down. Overcome with sickness. That is why he's calling you. Come to my house. When they invite Jesus to come to a house. What is the state of the sick person? Huh? It's in a deplorable state. Then they will say, Lord, come to my house. My daughter is lying grievously tormented my servant is almost dying my this my dad 
Then they call Jesus there. He has a call for the elders. Who represent Jesus. And what heal that anoint, let them anoint him with oil. Why? Oil is already known among Israel as a lily man, as a balm. That has some healing element. Let them put it on him, just press around him. What does the hand of a doctor do in your body? It gives you comfort. It gives you assurance. When the doctor says, come, 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 come. And he's pressing your hand. I say, open your eye. How do you feel? You feel fine. This sickness must go. Amen. The hand of the elders will comfort that person. There will be a communication of assurance to that person. Then, what heals him is not anointing oil. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. If he has committed sin, it shall be forgiven him. The disciples, never, in the days of Jesus, that's under Jesus' leadership, never ministered to any person with anointing oil that came to them. But as they were going from house to house, they saw cases of this kind. And they anointed them in their houses and healed and prayed for them in the name of Jesus. When they came, what did they say? Lord, even the devils were subject unto us. Through what? Is it through anointing oil? No. Satan has deceived the church. They have exalted anointing oil above the name of Jesus. Now, here it is for the sick. There is for the sick. Then what about anointing oil for Unicha Market? That they come to you in the market and say, we're going to anoint your shop with oil. Customers will come. That's witchcraft. I, I'm talking to you. What about anointing oil for, for interview? You're going for visa. We anoint your tongue with oil. That's why he said other things. What about anointing oil for the Holy Ghost? Why are you anointing them with the Holy Ghost? I'm with oil in place of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is there. Huh? When the Holy Ghost is there. Why are you bringing shadows? Every, the Bible says everybody that is born of God is born of the Spirit of God. If no one has the spirit of God, what says the world? He is not a Christian. And the people you are bringing to your church are all Christians. According to you, why are you giving them oil again? Okay, where is your example from? Where did you get example in scripture? Both Old and New Testament. For your information, an ordinary Israelite in the Old Testament, except as Baal, was never anointed with oil. That's number one. Number two, the Levites that were walking in the temple were never anointed with oil. You hear? Check it out. The only people anointed with oil, number one, the priests. Number two, the kings. And the anointing oil for the priests which we represent praise is specially made. And the Lord warned that nobody should make the kind. It is the ordinary anointing oil that was used to anoint the kings. And that represented the Holy Ghost. Is that okay? That represented the Holy Ghost. Next. No prophet in the Old Testament was anointed with oil. Because the spirit had already come into them. When the Lord says, when you go anoint Elisha, the son of Abel Mohola, to be a prophet in thy room, did he put oil on him? No. It means declare him. Declare him so. Appoint him. Appoint him so. 
and the Holy Ghost will just come upon him because he is a prophet. And Jesus, I mean, Moses told Joshua, would to God all the lost people were prophets and he would put his spirit in them. Amen? Amen. Uh, we are all now children of God having the Holy Ghost in our lives. Not the baptismal major. That's different. But the presence of the spirit is in us. When the Lord says, ye shall take of the spirit in you and put it on them. Was there any physical thing done? It's a spiritual world. Hence, they became all anointed by the anointing that came from Moses. That is it. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Is it that he put oil on his head? Can you claim that scripture? Can you claim that scripture? Do you claim it by putting oil on your head? It's a word that designates something. Not a practical thing. So, for your information, except in a restricted way, as declared by James, that allowed anointing oil a little space in Christianity. Anointing oil does not have the place you are given to it. The many are given to it. Wow! Jesus didn't use it. Amen? Yeah. Jesus didn't use it. Why anointing people for ministry? Even when the Lord says, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work that I have appointed them. Did they pour the oil on them? Then why did you get your own? That you're pouring oil on somebody and say, because he's anointed for ministry. Where did you get your own? Why are you operating outside the Bible? God will ask you a question. God will ask you for the pollutions you are giving to people. Where did you get your own from? Where? Where? Did you get your own from? That is the question. And we are kings, of course. We are both priests and kings. But in our time, it's by the Holy Ghost, which is already in us. You don't need it. And two, no apostle of Jesus used anointing oil clearly in his exemplary life. Some things are recommended for the feeble in faith. When Peter went to Aeneas to raise him from the dead, did he use oil? Aeneas was raised him from bed. He was bedridden for so many years. Did he use oil on him? shadow of Peter healed the sick. Did they pour oil on them? No. What about Paul? Did he use oil? No. That's another thing you should know. Then why are you so prompt in oil? Why? A Nigerian was coming from China and then he saw Chinese Anointing oil, anointing oil, anointing oil, buy anointing oil, buy anointing oil. Ah, Nigeria, use anointing oil. These people who don't know God are the ones selling anointing oil for Nigerians to come and use in church. Where did they get their own from? Is China not a, a country of mysticism? And many stories have come up on this anointing oil. I won't go too deep for them. Please. Don't attend anointing service. If you belong to that church, during anointing service, go somewhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please read the book. Um, Worshipping God in the beauty of holiness is outside. Yes, two sisters, two brothers. Quickly. Have we understood on anointing oil? Yes. 
Although we are talking and playing, and, but we're serious, is the truth of scripture. Because demons entered in and corrupted the people. The spirit of error that you received followed this type of thing. Followed it. The soul that break it and hedge, what will happen to him? Serpent is biting many people now in the church of Christ because of false use of anointing oil. Anointing oil for business. Anointing oil for exploit. Anointing oil for speed up. Anointing oil for double portion. Anointing oil for what again? Ask those people, where did they get it from? Yes, you can go ahead. Praise the Lord. I am Sister Julia Amen. Samuel. Daddy, please explain this scripture. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Why are you people making noise? Our, our sister has found a verse that has anointing. And she wanted to know what is that anointing? Is that not so? And the people are making noise. What? In 1 John chapter 2. 1 John. Chapter 2, verse 26 and 27. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. What is the anointing? Is the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yes, the next question. The next person, take the microphone. Praise the Lord. I am bro in Hakaichi Anosike from Imo State. Yes. This thing that bothers me, I came from a holiness church. You know, because as we are hearing of this uh, little, little mistakes in the church, so I used to tell them about some of this doctrine we are getting from holiness revival movement. But they used to mention that the elders of the church, those, the founders of the church, are they not in heaven? Okay, like something like covering of head, in, as a woman in the church, they say the founder of the church is in heaven, and revelation has been given that the woman is in heaven. Which church? Apostolic is that? faith church. Apostolic faith. So, like others are saying, like all these ones that are not taking holy communion, if you tell them, they will ask you, all those ones that are dying, are they not in heaven? They say that woman that was the founder of that church have never didn't cover her head for one day. So all this revelation now, as we are seeing it, even sis, uh, by Sister Linda's revelation, he said, Jesus said, one of those women that are not covering their hair in the church. So how can they go to heaven by all this mistake they have made before? Or maybe God was, because of their ignorance, God allowed them to make heaven, maybe to correct them later. Yes, definitely there is confusion. There is confusion. Because they say the founder of the church never used to covering her hair or her head in preaching in whatever they can do. Or did she do whatever she did for God. And 
Of course, she did very well. She did very well. Is she not in heaven now? If she is in heaven, then all those who are not covering their head, are they not also going to go to heaven? What I will want to tell them is don't judge according to human what you see. Judge by what God's word says. You hear? Don't judge by what you see. Judge by what God was saying. Jesus said, He that hears my word and does it not, I am not the one that will judge him, but my word shall judge him in, in that day. My word shall judge him in that day and the word has specified clearly things that you should not do you hear yes, things that you should not do again jesus said which of you come from maybe from the farm from a walk with your servant and said my servant sit down here let me prepare food for you is that what you do you sit down after the servant has finished preparing food for his master, what should he say? I have done my duty. I am yours unprofitable servant. What that woman did was her duty. It is not what will qualify her for heaven. What will qualify her for heaven is not service. If it were service, Moses would have been qualified to enter the promised land. When you finish that duty, say, I have done what I should because my creator asked me to do it. And I have done it. I am unprofitable servant. But concerning going to heaven is nothing but holiness after you finish service the lord brings you to holiness go and major him on holiness hey he's married to two wives eh? <laughs> you are serving me and you're married to two wives you don't know what my word says hell move exactly you don't go to heaven because of service you go to heaven because of holiness Without holiness, tell me the rest. No man shall see God. He is the president of Nigeria. No man shall see God. He is the bishop of uh, diocese. No man shall see God. He is the general overseer. No man shall see the Lord. He is the general superintendent. No man shall see the Lord. He is the senior pastor. No man shall see the Lord. He was the one that discovered Nigeria. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My name is Happiness Sunday Udo. Please, Daddy, I have two questions. One for myself and one for my sister. She said I should help her to ask this question. Before she came to Horimo, she was always doing um, this photograph work. Photography? Photograph. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So when she got born again and joined Horimo, so to her, she said, because of the holiness word she has heard, so she has not been going to this, all these worldly occasions again to take coverage, maybe to video them if they call her, which she was doing before. It is only when a holy church have, a, maybe Christians have occasion, that is when she goes. And now... She's no longer having money as before again. And it's really affecting her so much. The little money she gathered before she came to Harimo, she used an open business. And money is not entering in house rent. It, 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 she's not getting the money. 
So she was lamenting that maybe she even said that this Easter that is coming, that she may go out for the walk again, but she still needs clarification. So I told her that daddy is coming, that daddy will give her um, a satisfactory answer. Is she to continue in maybe the worldly church do wedding, they call her, should she still go? Or she should still remain where she is. She is here in the ground, in the camera. She will hear you as now, you speak. Sir. If she is hearing me, go and ask her. Does she want to be rude or she wants to be upper? There are two women. One is called upper. And another one is called who? She knows their story. Does she want to be upper or she wants to be rude? Just go and ask her, she won't understand. <laughs> ask your own. Praise the Lord. Please, Daddy, one day I was listening to your message. And in that message, you say that three men were tired of their sin. So they want to retire from sinning. The other one started making his confession. This other one started making his confession. And the third one said, hmm, his own problem is that he cannot keep quiet. That even what the people are saying now, I'm going to say it. So that is the state I am. In our unit in our chapter, because one of the messages we played in our chapter, you really emphasize on dressing for women. And me being a youth, a lot of the women, they will dress so ungodly. And you will approach them. A lot of them take offenses. And I cannot keep quiet. Both men and women. And that is why at times it will cause hatred. They will say, I'm doing, uh, my own is too much. At times they will give you name. So, sir, and I cannot keep quiet when things is going wrong. Especially in Horimon. Because it's what we are complaining in the other church we left. Because even when I was in my former church, I was a chorister, well known, even to our national headquarters. But when I got repented, the very day our reverend, I was a chorister, the very day the reverend wanted to anoint us with oil, he was anointing the choristers. As he came to me, I said, no, sir, don't let the oil to touch me. He said, what do you mean? The people were praying, prepared us, preparatory prayer. I said, sir, I don't want that oil. Don't touch me with it. But I've been taking it before. I said, I don't want it. He said, don't you believe in the anointing oil? And it's no, a very big question. So, sir, what advice, what should I do? Because I cannot keep quiet. Your own is the good type. <laughs> <laughs> the other third man is a gossiper. The one in you are telling the story. It's a gossiper. By your own, you're not gossiping. If you have a dog in your house that does not bark, it's not useful. Because the dog is barking at, in, at anybody who wants to come in. Is that not so? Yes. To protect the house. Your own, you are speaking to protect the righteousness yes, of God. Sir. Your own is a good type. Yes, sir. I should continue. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. My name is Stephen Nana Donatus. And uh, my question centers on uh, revival. You know, many a times, actually, when I, I got born again, September 2014. And from that time, uh, I usually hear these things and it gives me inspiration. But the more, it's like, the more I pray, the thing is like just going far away. Let me just go straight. We, we will receive, at times they will tell us in 1961, in 1980s, all of them, they will be telling us how revival was in all the world, how the people were catching the fire, how the youth speaking in tongues and all those things. And since that time, I've been like praying, like this fire, that same thing I've been hearing. Let me see them walking. Uh, most times, if I go to service like this, like they say, let's pray for this, the gift of tongue. And sincerely, all of them that I know I prayed with my heart, but from that time to today, it has not manifested. And not that I don't believe. Not that I don't believe. But what I'm saying, what, my question is, how can these things 
come again. In this hour. Those things we are hearing that time. We may not believe that time except we are seeing it now. So you cannot go to the youth and tell him in 1961, this one, this thing happened, this thing happened. And if he didn't repeat, if the same Christianity, if the Christianity happened in 1961, let it happen this time around. So that the youths also that are coming up will say, okay, this is what we saw. Actually, when uh, the children of Israel came out, they said, write these things and tell it to your children. The one in, Je in Egypt happened. Others were still happening as yeah. they were going. All so, you are saying this is because you have not yet been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Is that? Yes, sir. What a bit. <laughs> so, if God is God, let him show or baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Then he will. <laughs> if there is revival anywhere at all, it must be you that must be baptized with the Holy Ghost. What about all of us that have been baptized with the Holy Ghost? You didn't see? That is what my, this, because actually I go out for evangelism. Wait for it. Yeah. Wait for the Holy Ghost. Keep on praying until it manifests. Amen. Appreciate that it is already happening in other people. And that revival of the 1961 is happening now. Amen. It's only wait for your own. Amen. It will happen. May Amen. the Lord answer you. Amen. Uh, Daddy, I also want to ask this second question. Actually, I called you on phone. And I told you that I was going to ask you this question. Let me just throw it now. You called me? Yes, sir. On phone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, the, I think the third Sunday of uh, January, I attend Watchman since I came back home. I left Abuja and came back home. For two years now, I've been going to watch man. And uh, by God's grace, they, at times, they allow me to their pulpit. And uh, there is this always agreement that I have with the people. So, there is this uh, thing I like sharing uh, with the people. Like when Mommy Linda told us about the revision week, and uh, there also, uh, it was a uh, one minute, uh, counting down to the zero hour. So I was like telling them, look at how the spirit of God is one, working in us. So last, uh, I think minister's conference that I went to conference, the, the book was shared unto us. I received it. And when I was reading it, although I was sick, but yet I still need to finish that book. And I actually prayed when I was reading the book. So I brought it to my, to the pastor, to my pastor there. I said, look at this thing. And I know this thing is true. About I, uh, that of stubbornness and all those things, I didn't uh, emphasize on it. What I emphasized on was that very communion that for the past 30 years, since the church has begun, to, uh, be, uh, began, that there have not been this thing. And this thing is troubling me. If I am saying that God is here, using this one, using this one, to compare this thing, so that this thing will look true to the people. And it's not working. That's very message, Daddy. The man of God, the way he spoke about uh, Mommy Linda, I was not happy. Honestly, I was not happy in the service, but I controlled myself. Now, as I was coming by, because my mom, by God's grace, my mom became now a, a real Christian because of my life. Now, as we were coming back home, I saw her face. Then and I called you. And the question I wanted to ask is, this kind of thing that is happening like this, with this Christianity that we are talking about become one, if somebody of this caliber, instead of arranging with uh, uh, the elders there, what do we do about this thing? And he's coming to broadcast it like this. What is he telling the youth? That is why I, I, also, I actually asked about that revival because this one is, Jesus is in our side. This one is, Jesus is in my side. He's saying, God called me. This one is saying, God called me. This one is saying, God, is, God has told me that I'm the last. This. And those things are really hitting the people, especially the youth. So, my question is, are we, will it be possible for us to really get this thing that we are pursuing? This oneness because of what these people are doing? Amen. Isaiah. Chapter 50. Isaiah. Chapter 50. 
I read from verse 1 and verse 3. Just let's take it verse 1. Let's read verse 1. 1, 2, go. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? Whom have I put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. The Lord is blaming the members of those churches, including watchmen. Which among them has he sold to the general overseer of watchman? Can any member of watchman come and say, Oh God, you sold me to this man. Whatever the man will do or will not do, contrary to your will, I have nothing to do again. I must remain here. Is there any person? You all, none of you will escape the judgment of God. None. Come. If a vehicle is the driver carrying you people, and you come at a roadblock, and the driver say, um, and the, the policemen say, there are thieves operating there, and the driver says, I don't bother, I'm going. Will the passengers go with him? Why, is, why are you people not saying anything? It's because of your sins. None of you will escape. You will stand before God and tell why. You had his word and you respected man above God. You never valued your soul. If you valued your soul and went to that man and said, don't destroy us. We're leaving you. The man will repent and do the correct thing. But you exalted that man as above God. That God spoke. You are all dead men in that church. You are all dead men. And you think you are serving God and you are calling holiness. No holiness among you. No holiness. Holiness is obedience. Holiness is obedience to the word of God. I met haste and delayed not to keep thy commandment. But for almost one year, you are not bothering. You are not Christians. I'm saying it clearly. Let the general overseer hear me. Let all the leaders there hear me that I have declared them off. Because the Lord spoke the truth. They knew the truth. They despised the word of God. They should wait for judgment. Simple. Yes, let's listen to you. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Gift Ndubisi. Sister Gift Ndubisi from Imo State Horemo chapter. My question is on based on marriage restitution. There is this close relative of mine that the husband sent her out from the house just because there is no child bearing, there is no issue. So when I went to the woman, I was telling her that she has to go back to the husband, although she has married to another man. But from where I read in the scriptures, Daddy, I want you to lighten me here in the book of Deuteronomy from 24. I read from 1 to 4, and it says, When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it came to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the later husband hates her and writes her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the later husband died, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again 
to be his wife. After that, she is defied, for that is abomination before the Lord. And thou, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So, sir, I want to know what is this uncleanliness and defilement in her life? That so, scripture is no more in operation. It is in the Old Testament. It was given by the law of Moses. And we are not under the law. We are under grace. So that scripture was given by Moses during the law. But now that we are following Christ, Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believes. If you have believed in Christ, that one is no more what is practicable. That if you send away your wife and uh, she has gone to marry another man or somebody has gone to sleep with her, she is defiled. And as a result, don't marry her again. That is not the scripture. The Old Testament seems to deal more seriously with the wife. While the New Testament deals with both the man and the wife. So, as the man receives grace, to forgive. So, that receives grace from God to forgive. So, the woman also receives grace. So, also the man should show the woman grace. The woman should show the man grace of forgiveness when they have become married. Separation in marriage is only on account of fornication, not adultery. Fornication is the sin committed by the unmarried person. For example, you married a woman and uh, as you are sleeping with her you came to discover that she was married before what are you doing to her you are committing fornication put her away for the for fornication because you're committing fornication you have not married she has married what is she committing she is committing adultery you can put her away by Adult, by fornication that you are committing but she, the husband cannot put her away because of adultery that she's committing the, why? they had married and had become one flesh they had become one flesh and what God has joined together let no man not even the man that slept with the woman is not having the power to separate that marriage so adultery does not separate marriage. It's only fornication. Is that clear? I want to add something to the question I gave to this man here. You may belong to a church that is not serving God well. You are, and the Lord says, stay there. You are doing some function for me. You are winning people to me. You are a missionary to that place. Is that clear? You are a missionary. That's why although the people are not doing what is right, the Lord still says, stay there and be a light shining there and be bringing people to me. In this ground, therefore, if any man is in watchman because the Lord said, stay there, then that man, to show that the Lord kept him there, must be converting people to take holy communion, to, perf to perfect obedience. He must be leading them to where they will take holy communion and arrive at perfect obedience. If not so, if it's just there because of the spirit of that place, as I have said, nobody escapes. Nobody. Their leader is a stumbling block to them. You will consider it from that uh, revelation of Jesus. Thank you very much. Yes. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Joy from Abia State. So last week, Tuesday, we are having Bible study in our church. So we, we are discussing something in Ephesians uh, 5.10. We had the Bible said that we should not be partakers in unfruitful words of darkness, but rather we should reprove them. So, I asked our pastor a question. 
that every time when I'm correcting people, maybe what maybe when I see that what they are doing is not good, or maybe what they are wearing is not good. If I'm correcting them, they will be saying that I'm judging them. But the Bible says that we should reprove. I want you to clarify me what's the difference between correction and judgment. So he, she now asked the congregation. So one brother now said that judgment is when you have judged that person and condemned that person, that the person is going to hell. That, that is judgment. Okay, she now wants to conclude the answer. She now started by telling me that, do I know that nobody has ever gone to hell and nobody has ever gone to heaven? It didn't just scatter my head. My head, I said, no, it's not true. That there are people in hellfire now and there are people in heaven. She said, no, that the righteous who died are in paradise and the sinners who died, that God kept them in one place. And I asked her, where is that place? She said that God is throwing them into a hole, or you can call it a tunnel. <laughs> and I said, okay, I agree that that place is a hole or a tunnel, but there is something inside that place that is tormenting them, that sinners who died are now in hell. She said, no, that is not true, and that, that God cannot be tormenting people that died in their sin with fire now. When there are other sinners who are still on planet Earth, then how can God start judging people, start tormenting them with fire? Why there are others who are still committing sin? That God is waiting for that final judgment when he will now condemn those sinners into hell. And I'll ask her, what of that rich man that Jesus told us the story about in the Bible, that that rich man was in torment. Now, don't just ask direct question. Otherwise, okay. there's no time. Because it didn't just cause a lot of confusion. People there, they were not saying anything. It was only now, me and her. Now, what is the question okay. you want to know? So, I, I, I want you to throw more light because she said that we are going to continue on the discussion next Tuesday. So, so I want you to throw more light on it so that I will know what to answer her because I was trying to convince her you are, I should throw more light on what and what. That she was saying that there, that sinner, that nobody is in hellfire now, okay. and that nobody has gone to heaven. Okay. Sorry. Right. Now I, I think she's a member of Jehovah's Witness. She's from which church? Eh? Redeem. She must be a stranger in Redeem. Because, or maybe she newly came to redeem from Jehovah's Witness. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, now, in the book of Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. To 23 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day and there was a beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of souls who was telling this story sister who was telling this story very good and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, everybody, verse 23, one, two, go. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Where did he go to? Hell. Hell. So take her to this scripture. The wicked shall be turned unto 
Yeah. And all nations that forget God. One is already there. One is already there. And his name is called the rich man. And history said the, name, the man's name is Davis. In Isaiah chapter 66, I read verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their womb, for their womb shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. They shall go forth and see people in hell. Are they seeing people in hell today? Yes. Do you have an example of anybody? Yes. I mean, our sister. Praise the Lord. I gave her the cassette in 2013. So after listening to the message, she told me that the message is from the pit of hell, that she did not believe it. Amen. Now, my sister, listen. Some have made covenant with Satan that they are for him. They will never serve God. They have made covenant. Uh, who is this musician that made covenant with Satan? Michael Jackson. If you come to him with the word, he will laugh. Because he has made a covenant. Don't go back to her again. You hear? Don't go and waste energy with her. Because she is not looking for God. When she is looking for the truth, she should look for you. She should come to you. But if she's looking for argument, you don't have the power for it. The Bible tells us to avoid such things. It will corrupt your life. It will make you angry. Stop it. Is that okay? But I, what I am telling her, I'm not telling everybody. Because your case might be somebody really wants to know. Be patient to make him know. But her own case, the person has made up her mind. This is where I stand. God respects the will of people. Leave him or leave her. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Emmanuel from Abia State. I'm a pastor working under Christ Ascension Church, Omaha. Uh, my question goes this way. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, if somebody, you marry a, an agent of Satan, mistakenly, as a man of God, and uh, the, the woman has been giving you a headache in your ministry. He doesn't support you in your ministry. And every time you want to go to a program, he will try to attack you. Then at a time, I've been praying God to God to help in this situation. But one time I went to a program, I, I was coming back. He handed over a divorce letter to me. Then, in this case, what shall I do? That's yes. number one. Then, number two, I know that a demon-possessed woman can be delivered if the demon is cast away. But if a demon incarnate human being, can it be delivered? That's my question. Amen. Amen. Now, all of us are pitying you because you married an unbeliever. In fact, to you, you even married a demon. Is that so? <laughs> We pity you because you made a mistake. 
The mistake you made is that you were not born again when you were mature to marry. So you didn't have any God to pray to. You have your eyes. As you see, so you picked. Unfortunately, that one was rub, rub, rub with one tap. <laughs> and you didn't know that it was not mommy that was rub inside that leaf. What was it? Give me a microphone. Of course, sir. It is it is my, my rubbed very very much, sir. Uh, you, what was inside? It was not mama uh, that you thought you have picked mama, but it was not mama. It was not mama, sir. It was what? It, uh, I, it's a demon in carrot. <laughs> okay. So, I want to give you comfort. Amen. Amen. The comfort I am giving you is in First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse ten and eleven. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Now, let's come down again. To, I mean, let's go to chapter 7 verse 6 but I speak to I speak this by permission and not of commandment for I would that all men were even as I myself but every man had his own proper gift of God one after this manner and another after that I say therefore to the unmarried now you are not married because the woman has gone. You are alone. Is that not so? I say therefore to the married and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Paul loves you. And he's asking you to come and be like he himself. He doesn't have a wife. Everybody clap hands for him. Yes. What for? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 says, But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cared for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. In this your condition you will just open up for Jesus. Jesus, where do we go? Lagos, I'm going. Nobody at home. <laughs> it's me alone. Jesus, where next? Sokoto, I'm going. I, I don't need to bother because the, hey, my wife will be troubling. Where are mm, she's no more there. Jesus, where now? Been in Republic. Let's go. You will, now, you will serve God fully. Nothing will disturb you again. And that will be the will of God. Let the unbelieving depart. As she has departed. You are now under no bondage to anyone. You can do everything freely for Jesus. You are free. And that is why you are in this conference. Very free. Receive everything. You see how he has understood the, the situation now. <laughs> Receive everything. Enjoy. Uh, let's hear your testimony. What God will do when you go back. No restriction. No bondage. No woman at home. Only you will serve Jesus. 
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I
came from heaven You died for my sins You purchased me with your blood You are my Lord and my Savior But for my sins, oh Lord Jesus, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. Because you are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you.